Thinking aloud. Conversations on the leading edge of knowledge and discovery with psychologist Jeffrey Mishlove. Hello, I'm Jeffrey Mishlove, and today I'd like to talk about politics and consciousness. Now, for since 1986, I guess that's over 30 years, I've been uh, creating video tape interviews. And the topics that I have covered traditionally have been philosophy, psychology, health, science, and spirituality. I have avoided current events almost entirely, and I've avoided politics almost entirely. But I do think uh, there is a time and place for discussion about politics, not in terms of any political party or any candidate or any style of governing, but politics in general. One might say the philosophy of politics. Now, I believe everybody has a political bias, <laughs> or else they're completely disinterested in politics, which is also a bias. So just in case you don't don't know, let me make it very clear. I am a lifelong Democrat. I consider myself a liberal and I have always been. I have never voted for anyone else other than a Democratic candidate uh, in the 50 or more years since I have been voting. That's where I stand. However, I also believe in tolerance. And I have had many people on the program whose political views are quite different from my own. And it's not a problem because normally we're not discussing politics. One person in particular is known to have uh, rather extremist political views, but he, to my awareness, has never expressed them on this program. In an interview with me, we talk about philosophy and parapsychology and related issues. So my rule for engaging in discussions with people is that they have something intelligent to say about the topics under consideration. There has been an argument, and it's an interesting one, by the famous philosopher of science, Karl Popper, about tolerance. And he said this, if you believe in tolerance, which I do, then you have to be intolerant of people who are intolerant, because how else can we have a tolerant society? I disagree with Popper about that. I don't think that being intolerant of people who are intolerant really furthers the cause of tolerance. It seems to just aggravate it because it gives these people a platform to say, look at how I'm being treated. You claim to be so tolerant, but you're intolerant of my point of view. And it's amazing how many people do share intolerant viewpoints. I know, having grown up in a small Wisconsin town and being Jewish, I learned as a young child that people I never knew knew that I was Jewish and didn't like it. I would get uh, adults sometimes saying very nasty anti-Semitic remarks to me as, as a child. So I'm well aware that intolerance is deeply embedded in our community. And I also know that amongst people who are intolerant, they, they don't like multiculturalism, they don't like globalism. I happen to favor both, but I know a lot of these people think that globalism and multiculturalism are Jewish plots designed to weaken their uh, view of what the world should be like, that it should be dominated by uh, white Protestant males or something of that sort. Uh, in any case, why am I discussing this now with you? What is, what is in all of this for you? A uh, couple of things. One is to begin to ask yourself, if you're not clear where you stand politically, uh, it's important uh, for you to give that some thought. But there's a key, because my sense is that for every political posture a person might take, there is an equal and opposite posture somewhere. 
And sometimes people flip back and forth very quickly. I think we've seen that in some of our recent politics where long held beliefs by certain groups can be easily flipped around. Uh, the great philosopher Hegel talked about the dialectic process where you go from thesis to antithesis to a new synthesis. And so that's always going on politically, left wing, right wing, moderate, left wing, right wing, moderate. It can kind of be like a cyclical activity, almost you might think like the activity of the uh, symbol of this very video channel, the yin yang, and even I might say the rainbow yin yang. So politics in, in some ways can become very flexible for people. The positions change. And there is a sense in which you don't know whether or not you're on solid ground all the time with your political views because circumstances can change. I think the important thing in discussing politics from my point of view is that the discussion should be based on facts and logic, and of course there is a role for emotion. People have very strong feelings about things, and those feelings need to be acknowledged and honored. But the simple uh, way I think about it is that facts trump feelings, and facts even trump logic. If, if you believe something is logical but the facts are against you, well, the facts take priority. I think that's true in particular for people who are, have very emotional feelings about psychic functioning. They think it's just impossible. Well, I think the facts trump that. They trump your logic and they trump your emotions as, as far as parapsychology is concerned. And I think that uh, we ought to treat our politics the same way. And it's very likely in today's circumstances where politics seems to be weighing so heavily on us that I may, from time to time, engage in it maybe more often than I have in the past. But I want you to know as a viewer that uh, however the politics is being treated, I want it to be respectful and polite and factual, factually based. The previous segment of the In Present series, when I talked about the secrets of self-esteem, well, you may recall one of those secrets is never to devalue another human being. And I think that should especially apply when it comes to political conversations. And I, I know the temptation, especially in politics, is to consider those people who disagree with you politically to be somehow less human than you are. Uh, if you feel that way, and I know I sometimes do, it's a good idea to check yourself. So I'll leave you with that thought. Thank you for being with me. Mm -hmm.